Okay guys, we are talking about pulmonology. The lecture today is about the dynamics, the pressure dynamics in the alveoli and in the lungs during the restful breathing cycle. The, the charts, the graphs that we will make here are very much possible that you will see them in the USML examinations plus you should know them anyways in general. So, let us pay attention to this lecture. It is short and sweet but very high yield lecture. So, the, what we will be doing is we will be talking about pleural pressure at a restful state, then inspiration and expiration. So, let us start. Restful state, I exhale the normal tidal volume and then I stop, that is my restful state. Or I inhale the normal tidal volume and then I stop and I stop. You know this thing from our previous lectures that when I have exhaled normally in restful state, the air present in the lung is measured by the, the functional residual capacity. This is the combination of the residual capacity plus expiratory reserve volume, right? So, this was the residual capacity. With this, if you add the expiratory reserve volume ERV, then both of them together are called the functional residual capacity. Tidal volume sits on top of that. Now, let us say if I open my glottis, that means my airway is open to the environment and I stop breathing, then what is the alveolar pressure in my alveoli? So, that will be 0 0 centimeter of water, that is the alveolar pressure. What is the lungs recoil pressure? So, these, these red guys are lungs. What is the recoil pressure of the lung? It wants to collapse, right? We have discussed that in our previous lecture. Lungs want to shrink. So, the recoil pressure in the lung, recoil pressure in the lung and what is the pleural pressure? This is the pleural cavity, what is the pressure present here which is by the chest's expansion and chest pulling the pleura out, parietal pleura out, right? So, this is the parietal pleura, P A R I E T A L, parietal pleura, this red one is the visceral pleura, pleura and the parietal pleura is pulled out by the rib cage and that outward pull causes about minus 5 centimeter of water pressure. So, that minus 5 centimeter of water outward is balanced by minus 5 centimeter of water pressure inward or recoil inward by the, the recoil force which we talked in the last lecture. So, at this stage my lungs are neither expanding nor compressing, they are just steady. And the alveolar pressure is 0 because alveoli are open to the environment, cool. Now, imagine, so at this time wherever my breathing is, it was stopped. So, down here this is the this is the tidal volume. So, during this time I have kept, let us say I had exhaled and stopped. So, this whole time I did not breathe in. So, the tidal volume was 0. How about the pressures here? I will make the alveolar pressure in black over here. So, this is the alveolar pressure 0 during this time. How about the pleural pressure? I will make the pleural pressure with blue about minus 5. So, I will put that here, right? What is the transpulmonary pressure? We did the definition in the last one. Transpulmonary pressure is the difference between these two, which in this case, right now in this situation, it is minus 5. So, 0 minus minus 5, so 5 centimeter of water, okay? So, that is what we got. Now, imagine I reach here 
and I decide to inhale because I had stopped after exhaling. So now it is my turn to inhale. So I went to inhale. What would happen? Diaphragm is pushed down, chest cavity is elongated vertically. That pulls the lungs downwards as well. When the lungs are pulled down, that pulls the parietal pleura outwards. This is the parietal pleura and the force on the parietal pleura outward force is increased. By what? By the chest cavity. And who increased that in the chest cavity? Quiet breathing diaphragm. Diaphragm descended and that caused the elongation. When this increased, pleural cavity pressure went down. See, it is being pulled out. So you pull a balloon out. What is happening now? The pleural pressure went down to minus 7.5 centimeter of water. So if I draw that over here, remember this was the 8. This line is going to descend now to minus 7.5, minus 7.5 from minus 5. When that happens, the lung is going to be stretched out as well. When the lung is stretched out, the alveoli are stretched outwards as well. The surface tension in the alveoli, the inward recoil force is now lesser, that was minus 5, is lesser than minus 7.5. So there is a net minus 2.5 pull outwards. So recoil force here, recoil force recoil force here was minus 5 while the plural pressure or plural force has become minus 7.5 right or I should call it plus and 7.5 so now there is a difference between them and that difference is going to open up the alveoli so what would happen is alveoli would expand that would create suction in the alveoli and the air would have to run in so what will happen to the alveolar pressure? It only changes by very tiny amount. It goes to minus 1 centimeter of mercury. This guy went from 5 to minus 7.5 or minus 8. So this went more, but this one reduced. So what do you think would be the transpulmonary pressure? It is a subtraction of them, right? So about minus 6.5. So that has changed. Transpulmonary pressure net six minus six point five means it is pulling the lungs outwards and it is opening the alveoli. Now what would happen here? As a result of this, I was here, I would now inspire. So I would inhale. Normally about two seconds. Time about two seconds that I have taken a tidal volume. So this change in pressure from 0 to minus 1 centimeter of water, alveolar pressure, caused the alveoli to become enough big to pull in or suck in about 500 milliliters of air. That is a tidal volume. So now we are here. Imagine then what would happen at the expiration. The whole thing is going to become reversed. So at the expiration, the diaphragm is allowed to relax. When it relaxes, it ascends upward. When it ascends upward, it reduces the vertical size of the lungs. That causes the alveoli to become smaller. How? Plural pressure goes up. So plural pressure now from minus 7.5 will go back up to minus 5.0 centimeter of water. Remember, it is a plural pressure that is changing. And who is changing the plural pressure? Either di diaphragm in the quiet breathing or in the forced breathing, the muscles of the neck, external intercostals, internal intercostals, serratus inter interior, scalenae, uh, sternocleidomastoid for the inspiration side and abdominal recti for the expiration side and oblique, external and internal oblique for the cuffing. So anyways, the, this is where the things start. So as the expiration, the diaphragm ascended and the pressure inside the pleural cavity now went back. Now what is happening is end of this inspiration was that the recoil force had become minus 7.5 as well. They had to balance, right? So when we had pulled it out, it started from 5 and it became 7 and it kind of stopped. Now the recoil force was greater 
let us say 7, but the pleural force is now reducing, pleural pressure is now reducing. So, that causes the recoil force to become lesser than the pleural or more than the pleural and pleural would now collapse the lung. So, that collapse would cause the lungs to shrink, right, the recoil is allowed. The lung shrinking would cause increased pressure inside the alveoli. That increased pressure would squeeze on the, on the air and push it out. So, here we had 500 ml of air going in, here we have 500 of ml of air coming out, right. So, what will happen to the alveolar pressure? Alveolar pressure will go from 0 from minus 1 to 0 to about plus 1. This can also go to 4 depending upon how you are, you know, you know inhaling and exhaling. So, this goes to let us say plus 1 centimeter of water. That plus 1 causes the squeezing on the alveoli. That increases the pressure. Remember, pressure is directly Laplace's law related to the tension and the radius. So, now what is happening is the tension is increasing because we are allowing the lungs to collapse and the radius is reducing, pressure is increasing, that pressure would push the fluids out. So, what would happen here? So, uh, I said fluid, air out. What would happen here? The air which I was here, air will be moved out. So, this time is 2 seconds for one breath. So, this is what is happening at the end of the expiration. Once again, the recoil force and the pleural force will become equal. That would happen first here, the pleural force was increased and the recoil force slowly increased from 5 to 7.5 and became equal. So, it is like two balloons. You pull one balloon and the other balloon slowly opens and becomes equal in pressure. Then you collapse this balloon and this balloon slowly collapses and becomes equal in pressure. So, here what would happen is when you collapse the outside, then slowly the lungs would collapse and squeeze the air out and then finally the pressure will become equal. So, in the beginning of this, the expiration, pressure is different. That is what causes the alveoli to become small. But at the end, the pressure has become same. Which two pressure? Recoil force and the pleural force. Similar here, in the beginning, the pressure was the same, but you increased the pleural pressure and then at the end, they both pressure became the same again. So, that is the normal breathing cycle. Forced breathing is exaggeration of the same pressures. Thank you.